All right, what's up, guys? I'm Dan at Disarm, or Disarm is my YouTube channel. So I did a podcast with Max oh, like two weeks ago, and it's going crazy. It's almost at 100,000 views. So we were at the PBR Super 60 last week, and we ran it back because it was just doing so well. We wanted to just like get some highlights and get some clips. And pretty much, we just had like a list of topics, and we were like, hey, let's just like talk about Jazz Chisholm on the cover of MLB The Show. Let's talk about being compared to Bryce Harper. We just like listed five things, really with clips in mind, and just like put it on TikTok and Instagram. But it honestly ended up being a pretty good episode. So I wanted to start posting stuff on Enjoy the Show, this channel. So that's what we're doing right here. So go check out the other podcast if you haven't seen it. It's almost at 100K, like it's my best video ever. Uh, and people loved it and the clips are going crazy. But if you guys have already seen that one or just want to see this one first, it's a good, it's like more laid back. It's chill. We're just like talking about random stuff. It's also shorter. So without further ado, let's get right into that episode. I don't want to talk too much. If you guys are big Max Clark fans, you're going to love this. Uh, he's, you know, it was a great episode and obviously people love him for a reason. So I was really excited to talk to him. So let's get right into uh, the episode. Boom. Max, you're back. We're back, baby. On the pod. We're back. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know? Another great hotel room in Chicago. Uh, you beautiful. can't complain. Mm -hmm. It actually is really nice. So uh, it'd be a nice little skylight view um, of the highway whatever. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's freezing. But other than that, I'm just happy to be back with what the What have you been up to since we saw you six days ago? Man, honestly, kind of the same show. I mean, everybody saw it in the last video. But just getting after it day in, day out. Uh, a couple lifts here and there. And then just like what we're getting ready to talk about, just prepping for the Super 60. So it's yeah. been a blast. Yeah, yeah, Super 60. So just to get right into it, what um, what do you think about Jazz Chisholm? Obviously, it's been in the headlines a lot. Uh, you know, people have di their different opinions on it. What do you personally think about seeing Jazz on the cover of MLB The Show? I thought, I personally, I thought it was dope um i mean he's so good for the game um he's so good for younger audiences as well i mean just the things that he brings to the table are so different and just like outside of how good he is i mean people are always arguing well he wasn't the best player in the league this year he was an average player he was hurt he's like well first of all he's way more than an average player i mean he had a great stat line for the 60-ish games that he did play mm -hmm. um and i mean he's always an impact factor for the marlins so um as on top of that he's one of the most exciting players in baseball right now i mean he's got the ice cream glove hookup with aria like all of that's awesome um bringing so much change to the game i mean the dude's always playing with a smile on his face dude's always playing with passion and you know for me i love that because i'm that's that's who i am so uh seeing that's really cool and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying seeing him on the cover so who are some of your guys you look up to and who are in the league right now who you try to like mimic your style maybe not even like play style but just like the way you you approach the game who are some of the guys you like yeah and like we talked about in the last pod i mean the main one's obviously harper mm -hmm. uh he's like he's been my go-to i mean obviously he had a, he had his moment of arrogance in like 2018 2020 and he's like the most hated player and then he just came back in 2021 to now and he's like the most loved dude he, he's Philly's face like all of this it's amazing um and he's just kind of like reworked who he is as a person on the field and now it's no more just of you know his like arrogant personality it's him playing because he loves the game it's him playing because he's a passionate dude he's got so much flair I mean he is one of he probably is the most exciting baseball player in baseball right now I yeah. mean like people love Trout, people love Shohei. Like they are great players, and they are probably the two best players in the league right now. But Harper, man, it's so exciting to watch him play. Like as we we watched that uh, reel the other day, and it was the uh, bring Sally up right before he hit yeah, the home run yeah. in the in the World Series or in CLS or whatever, and that was crazy. I mean, that was just such an exciting moment. And then just like the way he reacted to the crowd was amazing. It's funny because when like my parents, when I try to describe what you are to baseball, like the easiest answer is Bryce Harper. I don't know what the draft guys are going to, like, I don't know what your comp is. I'm mm. not really sure what they're saying is your best player comparison. But to me, on the outside looking in, it's Bryce Harper just because of, like, the personality he brings. What do you think when you hear that kind of comparison? It's it's unreal because yeah. we were just talking last night with Shooter Hunt here, and literally the first thing he said was, you're the most exciting player since Bryce Harper. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's so much weight to carry first off, but it's also one of the coolest things of 18-year-old kid can hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bryce Harper's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I'm going to be on the cover of The Athletic. I have oh. half a million followers. He had at least the biggest following in youth baseball at the time, amateur baseball. And then on top of that, all of our numbers are extremely close together at the same age. I mean, he probably had a little bit more power than I did yeah, at the age, yeah. but my, my argument is he was using Beaser, so yeah, it, doesn't, true, it doesn't count. True, but no, true. seriously, he's he was unreal at his age, and just from a number standpoint, intelligence standpoint, and like just how exciting he was. He was always playing hard, 110%, and that's like exactly who I am. So I get comped a lot to Corbin Carroll. Okay. But Corbin Carroll's also just like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, does his own thing, very like organized, but plays his behind off. Um, so all of those guys, both of those two right there, my my go-to from yeah. player comps. But. That's awesome. <clears throat> so uh, so right 
right now we're in Chicago, pretty much Chicago, at the Super 60. Tell me about your experience so far here. I guess it's over now, but tell me about your experience at this event. Yeah, I mean, it was a blast. Um, it was kind of like the first competitive setting with other people that I've been in since the summer. So finally getting back out, competing with the guys, seeing everybody here. It was cool. Um, a lot of cool guys that I hadn't seen in a while. So um, on top of that, I mean, you got 350 scouts sitting around just charting, doing whatever they can, picking and knitting and everything. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it was a really cool experience. I mean, I've never really been in this type of showcase. I like It's weird to say because I feel like I've been everywhere, but that was the first time where it was like a true showcase. There's not much going on. It's a lot of like, it's way more laid back, but then you just dial it in for 10 minutes, go take some swings, do a little bit of outfield work. Um, but yeah, I mean, my showing was great. Uh, a lot of, a lot of effortless barrels, way higher exit than I had in the yeah, summer. Yeah, what were the so, exit Yeah, like? so I didn't go below 99, and I, and I peaked at 102. Nice. And in comparison, during the PG National, I was uh, 97 with wood. So that's a five-mile-an-hour jump in like six months. Wow, so dude. super stoked about that. Um, swing's coming along great. Made a lot of changes, so... That's awesome. And yeah, your swing looked really smooth today. Thank like you. effortless barrels is exactly what I thought when I saw your swing. It was very smooth. No like extra like no extra motion. Exactly. It was very clean. Which that is was important. that was like the biggest thing. So like for the off season this year, the biggest thing to work on was I just completely erased all the wasted movement. Mm -hmm. And then when I dropped my hands, it allowed my barrel path to be a little more accurate. So with that, the power just jumped out the roof. Yeah. Um, and like that that also comes with strength. Like I put I put on about ten pounds. So all of that coming together was awesome for February fifth. Like yeah. that's fantastic. That's for awesome, me. man. Speaking of uh, off season and training and putting on some weight what is your routine been like inside and what are you training for most for to get on the field in what like april march yeah, like, yeah. What, what are you what is your biggest emphasis right now yeah so like you said i mean i've been inside since about october it's just been way too cold and it's still like eight degrees at home so we're, we're not gonna be outside for a while um and then the actual high school season doesn't even start until march 15th and then until april 1st we don't play games oh so, wow. um, practices will start outside if the weather's applicable at about like march 15 16 and then we'll play a scrimmage on the 21st and then have uh, our first game April – or no, March 31st against mm -hmm. Ron Colley. So that will be exciting. Uh, we, I know we talked about that last week. Yeah. So, um, But, yeah, the offseason work has been a lot of fun. I've uh, been really getting after it. And the main focus right recently has just been honing in, like, the loopholes in my swing. Um, I had a lot of issues last year with attacking the ball at a steep angle, which was causing a lot of ground ball produce, uh, production. So uh, after, like, reworking all of that, dropped the hands a little bit, uh, allowed the barrel path to be way more clean. Um, and then on top of that, it allowed me to stay in the ground a little bit more. And the more you're in the ground, the more force you're producing. Gotcha. So with that came the XVO, the power. So right now, I mean, it's, it's beautiful, to be completely honest. I'm very happy with where I am. Uh, I've been really working hard on this because this is like the first time in my career that I've had a full swing rework. And so I'm super excited. Um, and it's made like the barrel to barrel contact that I've always had just 10 times better. That's huge. What are you looking forward to most for this last, uh, like your senior season of high school? It's always a big deal. What are you most looking forward to? I think overall, it's just getting one more season in. I mean, I missed the freshman season. So like state records are out of the question. Like it's, it's, it's just too hard. Um, like the, that we had a couple big leaders that just like, I would need all four years. Like mm -hmm. it was just unbelievable, especially like the hit record. I mean, I, I have more walks than hits in my high school career. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's going to be hard to top some of that, but looking forward to just kind of getting that last season with the guys. Um, this has been, it's been a great journey and we're going to be pretty solid this year. And on top of that, our sectionals got changed, which is the first round of playoffs for us. So we were always in like the best sectional in the state. And it was just like, we never really like, it was so hard to win. Um, but now the teams are a little more evenly based. So we actually have a very solid chance of at least like if we play our best, I feel like we can go out there and win sectionals. And then from there, the path gets a little bit easier. So hopefully we can go out there and do something special. I mean, it's been a long time since we've done anything like this, but a lot of young talent, um, but in a lot of kids that I feel like I've grown up with and a lot of kids that I've had by my side, like kind of training on my own. So all of this is just like, it's really cool to see one more season. Um, I'm excited and just, I'm, I'm looking forward to That's it. That's exciting, man. Yeah. One, one more thing I just thought of when we were talking like earlier, let me, let's go back to last night. We're at Top Golf and like 30 kids come up to you and like even adults like, yeah. asking for pictures. That's, I've never seen that before. Like I've gotten recognized with Leo a few times and it's like, oh, you knew who I was. Like <laughs> it was a, for you. It was like. It, it was like we walk by a group of kids and we're like, oh, these kids are about to see Max. And then they see you and then they swarm you, yeah, which is yeah, crazy. Yeah. And then today, obviously, there's kids showing up just to see you. We walk out of the car. Someone's asking for an autograph right there. They're waiting for you. What, what is that like for you? Just as an 18-year-old kid having people come up to you, that kind of stardom, what's it like for you? To be completely honest, it's really, really cool. Um, and obviously, like, it's, I'm blessed to have that feeling. I try not to be like, oh, you know, it's so dope. Like, <laughs> but no, it, it's really, really cool. Um, but I feel like it's, it's like the coolest for me because I feel like I'm I'm a role model to them. So it's like, 
you know, these kids looking up to me, like, why wouldn't I give back to them? I mean, I, it, like, I've had so many conversations with, like, guys that played for 10 to 15 years in the big leagues, like the big, big leagues, and they were talking about how just, like, if you support the fans who support you, you're just going to continue to grow that fan base, and that's, like, that's what I've learned. And, I mean, I have no problem stopping and taking pictures with some kids because I wouldn't be who I was on a social media and fan favorite standpoint if it wasn't for those kids that, you know, have built me up since I was 13. So, um, it's really cool. And like, they're always the nicest. They always say, please like, thank you, all this stuff. And, uh, it's just, it's a really cool, it's really cool to see. Dude, it's special. <clears throat> Cause the kids like light up. They were like, I was, yeah. I was talking to like a group of 10 kids. They're like, do you know Max? And I'm like, yeah, like kinda. And he's like, they're like, what do you, what, like, how do you know him? And I'm like, well, you did like a podcast. They're so, like, oh, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Like, can we meet him? And I'm like, yeah, probably. Yeah, like, yeah. Some one kid was like, I hope I don't catch him when he's like in a bad mood. And I'm like, dude, he's never, never in a bad mood. Never dude. in a bad mood. And then you went and said, what's up to those kids? And they were so freaking happy. Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah. Man. I just feel like it's cool to, you know, like, I feel like I make a kid's day if like I take time out of my day to be just like a good person. So, mm. Um, I mean, they're there supporting, so you always got to give back. So a lot of people obviously know you as Max Clark, the baseball player, but you have, you have a life outside of baseball. What are the most important things that you value outside of baseball in your personal life, relationships, whatever? What does that look like to you? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge part because like we were talking about with the kids, I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere without the support group I have and like everything outside of that. So, you know, blessed with a really, really good family. Uh, we spoke about it last week, but I actually have my parents are divorced. So I have four sets or excuse me, two sets of parents, four parents. Yeah. And, um, you know. Like some kids aren't always blessed to have two loving parents and I'm lucky enough that I have four. I mean, everybody gets along, everybody supports, like they all come to everything. They travel everywhere. Uh, they make so many sacrifices and like, that's so huge when it comes to things like this. Like it's so nice having, like if you have a bad game, you can go and talk to your parents about it. Like what, or a good game, you can go and talk to your parents about it. Mm. Um, but just knowing that they're supporting there, I'm super blessed to have that, but it's so nice. Like I love it. Um, and I love them. So that's the biggest thing for me. Those are huge. And then, like, another, like, the other side of that is friendships and relationships. I've been with the same group of friends since I was living in kindergarten, mm. and, like, I really haven't changed my circle. Uh, like, I used to be a kid who, like, had a bunch of, like, just people that I got along with, and I still do, but the same close circle has never changed. I mean, like, we literally have a group chat called, like, the Trap House, and it's, like, mm. it's us. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, we've been in that group chat since we were, like, in sixth grade. Wow. So... Um, like those guys, it's like eight of them. And we literally have been friends since kindergarten. So all of those kids are just so special to me. They support me. They're all at, most of them are athletes. Like most of them are going to play sports in college too. I have a bunch of really, really good football players that I'm friends with, um, that I played football with. And the other thing, the other side of that is they all understand like, Hey, I can't go out this weekend. Like I can't hang out with you guys. I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they're like, dude, go kill it. Like, let's go like, turn me up. Uh, And they always ask me about like, Hey, what's going on here? What's going on there? Uh, when you going to be home? Like, when can we see each other? Like whatever it may be, they're also at every single game. That's sweet. It's awesome. Um, and then on the other flip side of that, like my relationship, I mean, my girlfriend's amazing. Um, she is a really, really good athlete herself. She's incredibly talented. Um, she's going to play soccer at Dayton university and um she's actually one of like the best female athletes i've ever seen in my life if not the best by far and like that's a talking about like public figure female athletes she's incredibly fast um and like one of the hardest workers that i know including every single person that i know um she had hip labrum surgery a couple like nine months ago and she was back on the field in six months wow. it was crazy a huge surgery and she literally busted her behind to get back to where she was And like that comes with so much other stuff than just, Hey, I need to get back to my athletic performance. Like that's a struggle on like a personal standpoint, a mental standpoint. Like, like what happens if this happens? Like, what what are we going to do? Like, this is terrible. And then she did nothing but work and work and work for six days a week. Um, she honestly probably outworks me some days. Like she has the personal trainer. She does her own work. She goes and gets her work in when she needs to. And like the other side of that is we both understand each other so much that like, distance isn't a problem like she knows i'm in chicago right now she's supporting like when she goes to florida for ecnl championships i'm supporting her she came to la with us at the mlb all american yep. like that was unreal like traveling with the family all of this stuff it's amazing i um, mean i'm blessed to have her in my life she's she's fantastic well, my probably my biggest supporter besides my parents so that's really cool um and like i'm hers like it's it's awesome um she's really special to me so just doing what we can to continue loving each other and it's awesome that's great. That was cute. That's a good way to end, I think. I think that's a good way to end. Yeah. Are we good? You think that's it? Do the music. The music. Do the music. Music, yeah, yeah, all right. I didn't talk about piano, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh here. Dude, so in the last podcast, we talked about how my, my brother and sister were like a musical family, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we talked about that, but your family's music. So, Max, I heard on the MLB Pipeline podcast that you had a hidden talent. What? Why don't you... I, I know what it is, but the viewers obviously don't. What is your hidden talent? So, I've actually been... I played piano for 11 years. So, I'm 
pretty much like I've to the point where I can read any music. Like I, I can still read music. I took lessons for 11 years. So if there's something on like paper, I can figure out how to play it pretty quickly. And I like, that's so fun. That's so, it's that's literally cool like the best like party trick. Like everyone like, <laughs> you're with your buddies and they're like, dude, there's a piano right there. And you're like, ha, ha, I got it. I got this. <laughs> yeah. Let them cook. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And so like, um, my, you know, my brother and sister, uh, brother was a fantastic piano and violinist. And then um, he all is also crazy good on the guitar. Like he literally plays like any country song you can ever imagine. Wow. It's so dope. So like I'll play the piano and he'll do that, and we'll just like make like music for like ten That's minutes. Cool. Like it's That's so sick. funny because he's so talented. And then my sister was an incredibly talented violinist, um, and they both actually performed the national anthem at the Colts game one time. No way. So That's they sweet. were like thirteen and fifteen, I think. That's crazy. Like it was nuts. Yeah. They're so talented. So. Yeah, I, I enjoy music a ton. Like I'm super musical, um, and that goes like even in like the mainstream stuff. So always enjoying like I just my music taste is elite. All right, so I gotta ask if your music taste is elite, who are your top five artists? Who, who are your guys? Okay, I'm gonna stick mainstream mm-hmm. because I feel like that's like relatable at least. So and it, like you can argue mainstream. So uh, my personal top five is. This is not like who's best. This is not like if I had to do like a top five all time, it'd probably be different. Yeah. But my personal best is I'm gonna I'm gonna go J Cole one. Yeah. Oh, that's so my we're gonna, guy. We're gonna go J Cole yeah. one. We'll go Drake two. Wow. Yeah. And then and I'm talking old Drake, not the new Drake. Her her loss was good and like everything. I, I enjoyed it. It was yeah. a little more old Drake, but I didn't expect J Cole. That's honestly, my honestly guy. never yeah. mind. Was like okay, but yeah. it was like a seven out of ten. But okay, everything okay. else, his 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 mixtapes are crazy. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, we'll go J Cole Drake. Oh, uh, I want like Baby's my next favorite, mm-hmm. like Lil Baby, but I don't think he has enough credibility to be in the three spot yet. Sure, like, he hasn't sure. been out long enough. So I'm gonna right. go Baby Four. Uh huh. Oh, Morgan? yeah. Morgan honestly, Hatton? I'm gonna go Morgan Wall in five. Five. So yeah. in three. In three, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go Kendrick Lamar. I was gonna say NBA Young Boy, but no, yeah, Kendrick, nah, Young Kendrick, Boy. So then Young yeah. Young Boy's my six. Young Boy's yeah. just below Morgan Wall. So you went with like the more established, like the yeah. dudes who were they, they elite. Like, they repeatedly like the dropped three. the best yeah. projects. Like Kendrick Lamar's album was unreal. I, it's like, Which I one? Love the new one? The new yeah, one. Yeah. It was crazy good. Yeah. And like the like choreography was like unreal. Yeah. Like it was so dude, good. Dude, like Good Kid, Mad City. Yes, so bro. Fire. Mad to City. Butterfly. Still oh. listen to that stuff, dude. dude. Like it's so good. The replay value is great. Let me show you a picture. I'm a huge J. Cole guy. Okay, yeah. This is Leo. Have I shown you the picture? Of me being a fiend? Of me being a literal... Backstage. A literal... Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Bro, I got... Oh, I got I to gotta hit up Nick. This is like my favorite picture. That's, That's me. That's nuts, bro. Years. I was actually at USA in Cary facility for the... Some tournament. It was like 17 years. That's crazy. Nat- I played for NEB, so that was oh, like okay, our team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to his... I went, me and my dad drove down to... That's sick. 17 national team guy. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, was, I, gotta, I gotta call Nick about Morgan, dude, by the way, too, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you say you were going to call him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told him I was going to call him. That, we'll update you on that. That'd be yeah, kind of yeah. Cool. We'll let you know if I'll be backstage in Kentucky to meet Morgan That's Wallen. lit. That's, that is, so, that's, that's going to be crazy. that picture with him? That's yes, bro. Because I'm like i low-key like a... I'm a country boy stunner, so I got the boots, I got the jeans, I got the hat. Like That's what I do, bro. Nashville. Yeah, it's fast. Right in. I got the, I got the big old buckle belt. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Yes, sir. That's yes, fire. Sir. That's fire. Okay, cool. That was that was awesome. All right, yeah. That's